All right, so in this week's lesson, we're going to be talking about some simple ideas that you can implement that are easy to play. They're not technical at all. You can do this pretty much at any skill level, but they sound good. And we're talking about some triad things that, that I didn't talk about in last week's lesson. Last week, the last couple of weeks, we've talked about triads. These are some extensions even beyond what we've talked about. There's also going to be some three note and four note scale patterns. And just some ideas like that. And some of this is just hearing certain intervals. So we're gonna break all that down in this video. Uh, and if you'd like to get the extra materials that come with this, the MP3 jam track, there's a tablature for everything. There's a little song we're gonna be learning at the end that sort of pulls it all together, the tab for all of that. You can get those extra things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP487. Okay, so I have the backing track playing in the background, and I'm just going to let it loop over and over again as we go through this. And you'll notice it's very stripped down. It's just bass and drums, and there's a lot of open space, and it really depends on what I play that will color this thing and make it sound busy or sparse or even major or minor, because the bass line is just the root and the fifth. There's no third interval. Those two notes. Uh, so, because it's missing the third interval, I could play major stuff and it'll make it sound major, or I can play minor stuff and make it sound minor. Now, everything I'm going to play for this lesson is minor. We're going to stick to minor pentatonic scale, minor triads. This is all about minor ideas. And so, uh, we're going to steer this thing minor, but I just wanted to kind of point that out. The first thing we're going to play, and, and this is something anyone can do, no matter where you are as a player, you can start with us here. We're going to start with two notes. 5th fret, 4th string, 7th fret, 4th string. It sounds like this. Listen to this. So simple. Okay, now the first note I played was this, which is our flat 7. That's that dominant 7 sound. If we played an A7 chord, that note is what gives it that sound. And that's just, you take your major scale, you go to the seventh note in the major scale and you flat the seven. That's called your, uh, your flat seven or it gives you that dominant seven sound. Now, uh, I should before I get into that, I should just mention the position I'm in. I'm in the E position from the cage system. If we think about playing our A chord here, uh, which would be where you bar and then you, these three fingers obviously make up the E shape. That would be your A chord using the E shape. Um, now, we're playing minor, so you take your middle finger out of it and play the E minor shape, but it's the same principle. So that's where this is coming from. The other thing I'll mention about this shape or this position, this neighborhood, is the minor pentatonic scale pattern one fits perfectly into it. Look at this. They're both connected, so connect them in your mind. That E shape, E chord shape from the cage system and minor pentatonic scale pattern one. Just marry those two in your head. Um, okay, so back to this note. I want you to hear that note, that flat seven, and how that reacts to the, the backing track. Understand those intervals. You have to understand them and have to be able to hear them. And what I would do is I would just play the one note, maybe throw in some different rhythms for it, but just to hear the one note. And then you can tell it's sort of a tension note it needs to resolve. Once I come to that note, that's the result. That's the A. I go to the root. That's the root. So that's the seven, and that's the root. It's actually the flat seven and the root. And so just play around with that. And what kind of rhythms can you make with two notes? I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can say a lot with two notes. Uh, that's the first little thing we're going to look at. The next thing is we're going to stay on the same frets, frets 5 and 7, but now we're going to come up to strings 2 and 3 and do the same thing on the 7th fret. Now what we're doing here is we're going into triads, and this is sort of an extension of what we looked at last week. I'll put last week's lesson up on the screen. That was EP486, and we talked about, uh, in this E shape here, we talked about this triad. This, this top part of that triad, or top part of that chord shape, which was a triad here, that's barring the first three strings. And I mentioned in that, uh, in that lesson that one of the ideas you can use when you're playing a minor triad is you can take it up two frets and then go back. You can go back and forth between that. 
that's a way to sort of vamp or if you're hanging out on a chord for a while, it's just something you can do to fill the space. And that works for all your, your minor triads. So all my A minor triads, I can do that same principle or follow that same principle. So when I'm playing strings two and three, they're coming from that A minor triad. I just wanted to point out that's where they're coming from. So now we have, now we have that, right? And then I can slide that up two frets or back. Now look at what we can do. Is that a rhythm? Is that a lead? It's a little bit of both, but it's it's starting to get that minor uh, vibe, and it's something you can work definitely work into your solos or your rhythm playing. Um, I can also hit strings one and two. But it's coming from that triad, that A minor triad. So watch this. I can land on that too. I can sl so I, I can slide up two uh, two frets, but I don't have to go back. I can hang out there too, and that works over the jam track. Now here's another little add-on that I didn't talk about last week. I can take that up and do this. So I can. So I'm starting here, there's my A minor. I go up two frets, but I can go up three frets to this and use that as like a little, it's sort of more like a passing note. And it's really like the blue note uh, from your, uh, from the blues scale. But it's a nice little embellishment off of that minor chord. And you can do it off all of your A minor triads. It's just taking, going up two frets, then going up one more. Okay, let's take our ideas now. Let's we'll start from the beginning, from that flat seven. Now let's land up here. Right? I can say a lot with just a few ideas here. Now, uh, when I'm playing this, the 5th fret to the 7th fret, I can do the same thing when I go into pattern 2, minor pentatonic scale pattern 2. See, it's the same notes. So I'm now I'm up here on 8th fret, 2nd string, going up to the 10th fret. This is that same little box. Same thing, just an octave higher. What I like about this box, though, is it's connected to the next version of uh, you know, on strings one, two, and three, the next minor triad. So it's still an A minor triad. I'm just playing it the next, uh, the next train stop up on the train line. This is stop one. This will be stop two. All of this was covered in last week's lesson, EP four eight six. But check this out. So I can slide that up two frets, just like we did down here. afraid when you're playing a lead to let it breathe. You don't have to keep playing stuff all over the place. You don't have to like drive your brain crazy. It's just like singing. You have to take a breath. Same when you're playing. Let that be an idea. Hold it. There's an idea. And then come back down here. Watch this. That's having a conversation. No rush, right? You can have fun with it that way. Now, let's come up here to the next stop on our bus line. We'll come up to the next A minor triad. That would be like playing your A minor in first position. We're just doing it a whole octave higher, but just the top three strings. I can do the same technique we did down here. I can go up two frets, and then come up to that little blue note as well. I can arpeggiate it like this.
it's a great idea that you can work into your lead plan. And then I can come from here and go all the way back down to, you know, where I was to start. Let me throw out one other idea, and this is one that I've talked about, uh, I've just never really broken it down in a meaningful way. We're going to talk about some, um, some lead um, patterns, sorry, I couldn't get, get that idea out, lead patterns, and so when we're playing, uh, sc or sorry, scale patterns, we're going to be playing minor pentatonic scale, and a scale pattern is just sort of a cascading uh, effect that you get from playing just right down the scale, so let me demonstrate. Now what I'm playing is the minor pentatonic scale, pattern one, and I'm going down three notes, one, two, three, and then I go back one, and then I go down three more, and then I go back one. So if I did it slowly, or, or just on the beat, it would be like this. And then we go. So you can see it's one, two, three, and then go back one. One, two, three, and then go back one. The only difference is I'm stopping each time. I'm going one, two, three, stop, and then back. But if you take the stops out, you have and you can go back up the same way, doing the same thing. So you go. that way now that's playing it slowly and it's kind of kind of boring that way if you speed it up and play it as 16th notes doing the same thing you get this so anyway that's just another idea you can work into your plan now that's using three note pattern. What if we used four notes? So you go. This is another idea. And by the way, I have these in an exercise. I have exercises for premium member with tablature and just a, a separate video on just that so that you can practice playing those if you're interested. But this is all they are. It's, it's the three note pattern and the four note pattern. I use these quite a bit. Here's the four note pattern played with 16th notes. It sounds like this, two, three, four. Let me do it again. All right, so now let's reset the jam track and let's take all of these ideas and pull them together and play a lead using all the concepts we've talked about. All right, so if you like the tablature for that and the MP3 jam track to practice everything that we've talked about, and also the scale patterns, I've got those tabbed out, you can get those extra things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP487. All right, we'll see you in the next video.